the urban form of Barcelona can be explained through the distribution of food supply systems. 38 public food market halls are complemented by a private system formed by 1,522 specialty stores and 2,809 supermarkets that provide fresh edibles to citizens. According to Susan Parham, food spaces reflect location-responsive special qualities which have been developed and expressed over the long term, time-tested design qualities that are argued to contribute to a food-related sense of place that can be discerned across many times and places. In the case of Barcelona, public market halls constitute this specific local response. Although percentages show a downward trend, market halls supply 44% of fish and seafood, 34% of meat and pork, and 23% of fruit and vegetables consumed in the urban kitchens. The majority of Barcelonans, accustomed to buying fresh food in the immediate surroundings of their residences, could do so in a market hall. This means that 47% of households and 46% of the inhabitants of the city are included in this proximity perimeter according to calculations made by the authors based on the official Urban Open Data Census. During the first third of the 19th century, market spaces in Barcelona were extracted from the streets and transferred to regulated and specialized sites. In this way, the municipality put order in the promiscuous relationship between food and the city and laid the foundations for the construction of the first market halls. The vast majority of the 18 markets built in Barcelona until the mid-20th century is the result of previous outdoor activities. With the subsequent construction of canopies, markets ceased to be open spaces and food gained protection from sun, rain, cold and heat. However, in that precise moment, the city lost the most immediate tie with what marketplaces had granted until then, the organic relationship through smells and colors established between public space and food. This presentation looks at half of the market halls in force today, 19 of the 38 buildings that were built since 1957. This period is signaled by four main dates. 1957, that was the start of a brief period in which the construction of market halls was permitted to private stakeholders. 1971, when the construction of a wholesale market that centralized the food distribution in the metropolis took place. 1986, in the first years of the democracy after the dictatorship, where the heritage of markets was rediscovered and valued. And finally, 1991, when a public agency was created with the specific aim of building new markets and refurbishing the existing ones. Half of the market halls active today were built late after 1957, at a time when the architectural type was in decline or disappearance in most cities. With the country under a political dictatorship, a municipal strategy was developed to expand the public market system to strengthen small commercial centralities in peripheral neighborhoods. In many of these cases, the construction of the market hall was a milestone that preceded the services of any other facility or the arrival of public transportation systems. Markets built in the second half of the 20th century, when other European cities that had been equipped with a public market system abandoned it in favor of other food supply systems, are characterized by a shift to a progressive artificial indoor environment. The insertion of markets in pre-existing buildings or in small plots between dividing walls, together with the drafting of a law that authorized private stakeholders to build and operate market halls under a temporary concession, explained the urgency and opportunistic nature with which the system was consolidated at that time. The immediate decade of 1960s was a period of expansion of food supply towards more peripheral neighborhoods and coincided with a transition from steel structure roofs to molded reinforced concrete membranes. Those buildings reinterpreted the intimate relationship that food trade had established with covered space and they intended to update it with a new interior atmosphere. 
This coincides with a new commitment for the market hold system to try to alleviate the lack of grocery stores that persisted since the post-war period. Although they were designed with the aim of generating a new contemporary image, these buildings were sheltered under rooftops that largely disregard the character of all market halls. They reduce the volume of interior space and natural ventilation and, consequently, they prepare the appearance of a group of new markets housed under simple concrete slabs. At that time, supermarkets gradually emerged across the city and seemed to inspire a set of more odd buildings that neglected the historical memory of the first market halls. Beyond their limited capacity to create a distinctive interior, those markets renounced to the generation of a new urban identity, which would have been especially appropriate since the urban fabric in their surroundings was in need of landmarks that market halls could have embodied. The internal passages in market halls have been traditionally named streets, not corridors, what reaffirms their public condition and their own physical definition. They have always been interior spaces treated as exteriors, Historical images show power lines and urban lighting inside market halls. Market streets, as city streets, have slopes and drains that simplify cleaning pavements after daily activity. The first refurbishments promoted had as main objective to regenerate the urban fabric by restoring the market halls, but also to combat the growing decrease in sales. The incorporation of other programs, such as board markets and restaurants inside market halls to attract customers, resulted in a reduction in the number of stalls as they were renewed. The most representative example includes San Antonio, which decreased from 302 stalls to 83. Stalls have gained built volume and commercial identity through signage and interior design. The image of continuum of tables has disappeared and at the same time the width of streets within markets has triggered the consequent loss of visibility of the roofs and has become a decisive factor in the perception of interior spaces. The publication of an urban regulation in 1986, the so-called Special Plan for Food Commercial Facilities, laid the foundations for a transformation of the food supply system whose legacy is still in force today. The new policy took advantage of the isotropic condition of markets in the urban context. Markets did not fulfill the price control function that had given rise to them in the 19th century, but nevertheless their urban distribution controlled the territory. More than a network of interconnected pieces, each market supplied a specific area of influence so they could be converted into nodes of local centrality. An ambitious reform and expansion model was implemented to make municipal markets the center of the fresh food distribution network, which turned market halls into triggers for the regeneration of food retail premises. The first pickup policy written in 1986 focused on the idea of concentration as a tool to strengthen the system based on the definition of the so-called polarity areas around the nodes of market halls, where the most important part of the food purchases accumulated. At the time of the preparation of the policy, there were 15,000 registered food stores, of which 42% were inside the municipal markets. Numbers show that the total amount of food establishments in the city decreased by 75% in the last revision of the PECAP policy in 2015. However, looking at what has happened inside the polarity perimeters, figures show a different trend. There was only a loss of 20% of the units. If markets had turned into a desert the food system around them until 1986, Thanks to pickup policy, they managed to attract food selling establishments to make the constellation of food stores in Barcelona look like isotropic, oblivious to the presence of the markets. Given the distribution of the system in the city, 
public markets have today the capacity to become a tool capable of exercising control over food prices and to be the stage for a public commitment to the introduction of new practices related to healthy feeding habits. As a result of the progressive strengthening over time of this urban infrastructure of food suppliers sustained on 38 public markets, the city can be considered, with very few exceptions, a food oasis. The system expands up to 94 markets within the 36 municipalities that make up the metropolitan area, so Barcelona has been a model for the rest of the surrounding towns that have at least one market hall located at their core. Each city has its own rules to transport, store and expose to be sold the food for its inhabitants. Since 1971, the Barcelona food system has been nourished by a single wholesale market. Mercabarna is a city that operates 24 hours a day with the aim of guaranteeing the supply of fresh food to citizens, which acts as a transformer that scales the global origin of edibles. It imports and distributes food to market halls and stores that in turn supply private kitchens. The efficiency of Mercabarna relies in its proximity to the port. Perafuertes is an architect with a PhD in architecture. After being adjunct professor and assistant professor since 2014, his tenure as associate professor at the Department of Architectural Design at the Vallès School of Architecture, where he also holds a vice dean position since 2011. He's a research fellow at Habitar Group. Eulalia Gomez Escoda is an architect and urban designer with a PhD in urbanism. She has been adjunct professor, assistant professor, and since 2018, she is associate professor, train or track legible position at the Department of Urban Design and Urban Planning at the School of Architecture of Barcelona. She is a postdoc researcher at Loop Barcelona Urbanism Laboratory. They both started this joint research in 2018 as part of a major research project called Food and Urban Public Space Barcelona as Case Study 2016-2019.